so here I am in the middle of a 5150 project and I've run into a bit of a problem. This floppy drive is having problems seeking the head back and forth. Now in that last shot, the transport actually moved about halfway through the drive seeking and I'm thinking that's from me trying to take a bunch of shots of it failing. So it's making a little bit of progress through brute force. But with another test and a closer look here, we can see it's still not all right and it still doesn't actually read the disc. I'm guessing that even though the transport is able to move, it's not able to move finely enough to be able to read the separate tracks on the disc. So while solving this problem, I thought we'd take a look at some procedures for maintaining and restoring a floppy drive. So first we should go ahead and start with getting the transport moving. Now on the right here we have the good working drive that I just booted the computer from, and on the left we have the drive that is not working. Now to demonstrate the difference in how well the transport moves between the good one and the bad one, I'm going to use a pair of tweezers and push on it from the rear. So let's see how easily the good transport moves. Not too bad. Pretty easily. Now the bad transport takes a lot of force to actually get to move. So at this point you might be thinking it's time to break out the WD-40. But this actually isn't what you want to use. You're going to want to use a silicone paste or some other kind of lubricant. And I say some other kind of lubricant because WD-40 is not a lubricant. Now you could possibly use the WD-40 to clean the part, but don't rely on it as a long-term solution. Now in the case of this drive, the transport's pretty bad, so I want to give it a good thorough cleaning. So I'm going to take out the screw up front, the two back here, and this one, so I can pull the bars out and give them a good scrub. Now in the case of the 5150 drive here, we can't take the transport out because it has these metal straps that wrap around a drum down here, which is how it moves the head back and forth, translating circular motion into linear motion. So it would be a big pain to have to rewind that, so we're just going to go and leave that. You are able to pull out the guide rails though, so we'll go ahead and clean those. I'm just going to use a paper towel with isopropanol on it to clean the guide rails. This should get off any previous lubricants and any dust. And I'll go ahead and clean out the holes in the transport with some Q-tips dipped in isopropanol as well. Now that I've got everything cleaned off, I put it all back together and got the transport on the guide rails. And I'm going to go ahead and use the 3-in-1 oil on the guide rails for the transport. All right, now that I've got the oil put back on, it does seem to feel a bit smoother, but when I do the tweezer test, it still doesn't really move. So something's not quite right here. I'm wondering if possibly the bearings in the stepper driver are bad because the movement is inconsistent. So that wouldn't be good. Well, there's only one way I can think of to find out.
Okay, now after much work, I have the stepper motor out of the floppy drive and the bearings really do not feel good. Uh, I'm pretty sure this thing is shot. And I can tell you for certain, it's not the motion platform on the transport because that moves perfectly fine and is very free and has plenty of play. So we need to replace the stepper. Thankfully though, I have a spare parts donor drive, so I just need to get the stepper out of that. Well, unfortunately it looks like I may not be out of the woods yet, because if I take off this board, I'm not able to move this transport at all. It is totally seized. So I don't know if the motor is bad on this one, or if perhaps it is just the guide rails need oiled or not. So um, I'll just start taking this one apart and hope for the best. So, just uh, pretend you watched that whole disassembly thing uh, a second time. Okay, I have the second motor out, and for reference, let me spin the first one, okay? And the second one, I can't get to spin it at all, so let me take some pliers to it and see if I can get it to go. Oh, oh, it is not happy. So that kind of kills my plan of just trying to replace the stepper motor with one from the spare, because that motor's just, that's gone. There's, that's not doing anything ever again. Uh, now I'm curious, uh, I'm going to try and take out the locking ring in there on both sides, and let's see how bad that is inside. Maybe I could unseize it and relubricate it and have it be fine, I don't know. These aren't quite the right tools for the job, but they work pretty well. So, all right, let's see here. Ah, there we go, the screws are the key. So, um, here we have our shaft, and we have the front bearing, that one rotates, and the rear bearing, ooh, which, uh, does not. That one's clearly bad. Let me see if I can get the microphone to catch the audible sounds it's making. So the problem with these two motors is that the bearings have clearly gone bad somewhere. So I wonder if I could make a hybrid of one of the sets of bearings being good and just get rid of the bad bearings and have a functional drive. So uh, let's take apart the other stepper motor and see if we can find a good bearing. Well, unfortunately, the bearings from the other motor really aren't any better. This one seems to move freely on the shaft, but once I take it out, I can feel it has a lot of problems inside. I think the rear bearing may be good because the center part does not move and it feels smooth enough, which is the same as, well, no, that one's horrible. <laughs> It was, I think the front one on here was good. So I might be able to use these two bearings. Um, no, that's clearly moving. How does that one feel? No, that one's got some real problems too. So um, I have two pretty bum bearings. One really, really bad bearing. That one's definitely toast. And one that's good. So I'm thinking that between the two of these, I should take the one that feels the best, which is not that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, take this one, which, or is this one, again, just not moving at all? Yeah, this is, this is a tough call. Anyway, I'm thinking what I should do is put one in this cap and soak it in some three-in-one oil to try and penetrate down in there. Now, these are supposed to be sealed bearings, but as we can see from this one that's kind of discolored, that clearly the seal isn't all that great, and that's probably what my root problem here is anyway, that the seals are kind of coming off of these. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure if I take one of these, maybe I can find whichever one looks the least sealed. So I got the one that doesn't move, one that feels fairly bad, and one that feels really bad. So, uh, of them, I bet the one that doesn't move is probably the best bet. So, let's 
try soaking that. And see how that goes. Okay, while we're on the topic of things that suck, here are both motor cores for the stepper motors. And this one seems pretty good. I'm happy with how that one looks. But this one is starting to delaminate. So the different steel plate layers are starting to come apart, which is bad. That can happen with transformers as well and will be what causes them to buzz. So that is a problem that's just going to keep getting worse over time. I can possibly re-glue these back together around the outside to help uh, help fix that, but ugh, it's that still sucks that that's happening. Now some of you may be thinking that these stepper motors look very similar to the ones used on most cheap 3D printers. And that's because they're the same standard NEMA 17 size. But the size isn't the only thing you need to think about when substituting a stepper motor. The biggest thing you need to worry about is the degrees per step. But there are other things you need to consider, such as the internal resistance and inductance, current draw, and operating voltages. These motors in my ANET A8 are different on almost all fronts, so I don't think it's a good idea to try and put them in the drive. Alright, while I've got this one soaking, I'm going to go ahead and try and lubricate this one as well, which again, you can hear how bad it is. So I'm just going to try and apply some 3-in-1 oil on the outside and see if that makes it any better. I again, know these are sealed and that this shouldn't make a difference, but I'm just curious. Actually, that made a huge difference. Look at that. It keeps spinning after I touch it. Even the good one doesn't do that. Oh man, I might be able to resuscitate these. Wow, that is massively, massively better. Yeah, let's do the good bearing. <laughs> and there we go, free spinning. I'm gonna go for broke and see if I can restore all four bearings here, but while that one's still soaking, I'm gonna go ahead and put these two good bearings now um, on the same shaft, reassemble one of the drives and see how it performs. All right, it's back together and it's feeling way, way better than before, but and it's it's not totally smooth. It's a lot smoother, um, but it's not perfect. I can, I'm pretty sure the bearings have some damage inside. Well, the ball bearings have some damage inside the round bearings, and the round bearings really shouldn't be able to be oiled like this. And there's nothing more evident than that than this brown residue that you can see right here. Um, I set down a bearing right here and this brown stuff came out. Now, for reference, the 3-in-1 oil is not brown. So that's the original grease that was in the bearing and it came out. So they're they're totally open and they're not supposed to be. That's These are meant to be sealed bearings that you shouldn't be able to do this with. So yeah, there's problems. So I can go ahead and fix this, but it's just going to have more problems down the road. But at least I know how to fix it, and I could always get new bearings to put in there. Um, it might actually just be cheapest to buy a cheap stepper motor and put the bearings from that in this one, um, as long as I make sure I match the shaft size with it. But uh, for now, I think I'm ready to try sticking this back into a floppy drive and see if it works.
All right, everything's put back together. For the most part, some loose stuff I'll get to in a moment. Um, I have the 5150 DOS disk in here and the PC Junior DOS disk in here. This is the drive I just repaired. Now let's do a directory listing. Aw, yeah! So yes, now the drive is in fact working. Now I had two problems that were related to each other when I finally got this back together, and they both had the same root cause. So first off, the transport wasn't going all the way back and activating the switch down here that tells the 5150 that the transport is in the home position. I'd tried to test my way around that by using my little poker here to hit the switch from the back, and that wouldn't actually fix the problem, because that was a symptom, not an actual problem. It shared the same problem as a sector tracking issue. The head was not in the correct position on the floppy disk to be able to read the data. Now, on the back here, we have one screw. You have to loosen this screw that holds the whole transport and servo mechanism in place, and you can use this to adjust the forward and rear position of the floppy drive transport. So you can see this barely moving when I rotate that screw. So now I had to tune that to the point where it would actually work with the computer. Now it's possible for this to get misaligned as well, so if you're having a drive that shows sector tracking issues, go ahead and look at adjusting that screw. Man, I really did not expect to have to get that deep into a floppy drive with a repair today. I, I just wanted to show a little bit of maintenance on these things. And, well, I now have it working, and I do still want to show how to do some maintenance, so I'm going to go ahead and cover a few more things about working with these old floppy drives so you can just have some reference material for things. So next let's take a look at cleaning the read-write heads on the drive. We can lift up the top head and we can get a good look at the bottom head. Now to do this I like to just use a Q-tip dipped in isopropanol. You can get in there and you can give them a good scrub and clean off any debris or oil or whatever that's got onto those drive heads. When you're done, you can just flip it around and use the dry side to make sure you clean up anything that you don't want left behind. Now alternatively, you can get a floppy disk cleaning disk. It's basically a wet wipe in the shape of a floppy disk that you can stick in that will just spin around when the drive is activated and clean the read heads for you. Those aren't a bad option if you can get a hold of them. They are obviously not making them anymore, so what supplies are out there are it. I only have these ones for floppy drives that I can't easily open and access, so I'll actually reuse these and re-wet them if they don't get too dirty during a cleaning. Another thing you may need to look out for is this screw. It sets the maximum position for home for the read write head transport. If that's incorrectly set, then the head won't be where it expects to be when it tries to access data from the disk. That screw starts out pretty well glued in place, but it could have broken loose or someone could have tried to change it incorrectly. And there's another screw right next to it that could come loose that would allow it to rotate out of place. So that one's actually a lot easier to fix because you just need to make this black block parallel with the metal plate it's sitting on. And lastly, I've switched to a single light source so I can show you how you can read the speed indicator on the bottom of a floppy drive. Now you want to use a single light bulb in the entire room for this, just so you can't possibly get conflicting frequencies, and you want to make sure you have something like a fluorescent light that's going to flicker with the mains frequency of your AC power. If you live in a 50 Hz territory, you're going to want to use the center circle, and if you live in a 60 Hz territory, you're going to want to use the outer circle. Now, running that again, we can see we have some standing lines on there that we can see because of the flickering light. I can also affect the tension of the belt, and you can see those positions move. So the belt having worn out over time, because possibly this plate could have gone bad and grease could have gotten through, you can see it could get through there, uh, that could have dripped onto the belt, hardened it, and made it wear out. Or it could just be that it was used a lot and the belt is worn out and needs changed. So if you're seeing this look like it's not standing still, then you know you should consider changing your belt. Well, there we go. My 5150 is all better again. Both drives are fully functional, and it's ready to go for the video I actually wanted to make on it. So, that'll be coming up next. But there's a few more things I wanted to cover before we moved on, so let me show you a couple more things. So this is the stepper motor from the parts floppy drive. It's one that had one of the bearings soaking in the cap that wouldn't move at all, it was completely seized, and the other bearing that was really rough. 
and I've gone ahead and lubed up those bearings and put it all back together and wouldn't you know it, this one's great now as well. So I think that these bearings are just kind of having the oil seep out and it's making problems. So I think this could be a good restoration procedure for floppy drives in the future. I also wanted to mention that I will be putting the other floppy drive back together even though it doesn't work. And I wanted to mention why it doesn't work. I got this drive because it's missing one of the boards that goes right here. So it just can't work without that board. If I could get one of those, sure, I would complete it and leave it as a functional drive somewhere, but I bought it specifically as parts to fix some of my other drives. So it's not a really big concern of mine. And lastly, I want to demonstrate something I found quite interesting, and I'm going to do this by loading Jeopardy from both of these floppy drives. The freshly lubricated stepper motor seems to have almost no sound compared to the untouched floppy drive. And I want you to be able to hear the difference for yourself. Isn't that weird how big of a difference it made? It's making me wonder if all of my five and a quarter drives need to be taken apart and relubricated. If they're not meant to sound like that. Well, anyway, that's it for this interlude on the project I actually wanted to do. Um, I hope this is useful. I kind of like the idea of breaking this out rather than having it be included in the next video about the 5150. It just, it, it wasn't going to fit in that one and you'll see why when it comes out. And I think I may do this in the future when I have something that's really generic that would be better off on its own video that I could reference from elsewhere. So hopefully this is helpful to some people, and uh, I'll see you later.